How many of you have sent an email to your advisor and there is nothing? You have never heard from him or her and you are anxious about what next. Hi guys, this is Vera Chen from PhD Coffee Time. If you are watching this video, this is the part two of how to have a positive relationship with your research advisor. And if you missed the last video, they are in the link in the description box below. In this month of February, I will talk about all the relationship skills that you need to have as a PhD. If you want more content like this, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything that's coming up. Today, I'm going to cover a few scenarios. So scenario number one, that person has not responded to you and you need to follow up with that. Go to your sent mailbox and click on the email you just sent to that person and reply to yourself. Reply to that email to all, that will include your advisor and it will reignite that, that thread. And start politely and say, further to my last email related to blah, blah, blah. I'd like to provide an update and related to blah, blah, blah. And with that, I hope this also serves as a reminder that you could take a look at this project and I greatly appreciate your time and advice for me. Do not take it personally because nowadays being a scientist and a permanent position advisor, if they're going through tenure, they're probably getting through a lot of stress. And if you are one of the students, they are also trying to spread the attention to many different students in this group. Be strategic. Do not send an email on Saturday night. That's probably the least likely to be open. If you have to choose a time, try to send it Tuesday morning because Monday morning is an uh, overwhelming time. If you are on different time zone with your advisor, try to send it the time that is going to be a normal morning hour that when she go to a conference, she's going to open your email and see it first. Scenario two, you have a burning decision you want to make so that you can proceed with experiment. You need your advisor to respond to you quickly. How can you promote that email to be answered in the way that is fast enough and you're going to make your decision very quickly? Chances are, you can make this as a phone call if, because if it's urgent, you can make a call. But if you can't reach your advisor with your phone, then try to make it an A, B, C choice, multiple choice. For example, you can write clearly in your email, what is the challenge you're facing? I'm writing regarding this experiment A, and we are facing this obstacle and I've talked to a technician and I've talked to another professor and their suggestions are option number one, number two, and I personally think we could also do number three. Make it bullet points short and invite her advice. I'm open to your choice of either one, two or three. Give a time, give a deadline. It will be really helpful for us to move forward if you send us a reply saying, if you prefer which one by Friday. If you have further suggestion beyond this option, you're welcome to reach out to me by phone calls. Scenario three, you need physical signatures on something so that you can proceed with some authorization, such as a letter to apply for grant, or you need to purchase some reagents. You need to make sure you prepare all of this physical paper all at once and go to your advisor and get this signed in five minutes. Prepare your elevator pitch on why you need this and further to my email, I've sent you all of this information. So if you have done this work before, you can get this interaction as short as an elevator pitch. You are sitting on the paper and you're waiting on your advisor to comment on it. That's the tricky part. However, you can make this easy for that person to respond to by highlighting what is urgently important for you to proceed. For example, you might have agreed on all of the methodology and you are just needing advice on the introduction part. Then you can clarify with the attachment of your draft and on the email, write a little summary on, uh, with about 100 words and just say, 
um, we have already gone through most of the other parts and I'd like to have your attention just on this highlighted section of the draft. That way you are streamlining your advisor and helping that person to be focused on what you need. And you're crystal clear about that. Scenario five, which could be in the end of your PhD and you need your advisor to write a reference letter and somehow that person is too busy to write it. The letter has never been written for a while. So ideally your advisor could write everything for you and that's the best outcome. But a lot of the time advisors are very busy. How you can help is to write your own reference letter. And how does it work? You're not just trying to brag about what you do and try to push that person to endorse it. But the way you can do it is to make it an outline of achievement you think that are relevant to your, um, to your reference letter application. And you provide just a draft and it's a Word document and you just write an email summarizing what you have done and said, um, this is a working draft that might help you save time and I appreciate your consideration to help me writing this reference letter and please feel free to change anything I have written. I just write this draft to help you save the time. If you Scenario six, that is a good way to invite feedback. So I have this formula of question that I've learned. You can ask from the scale of one to 10, how much do you think I have performed in that presentation? And perhaps someone will tell you, oh, uh, I thought you present quite well. Uh, your data looks nice and you were confident. There were, um, I will say, uh, eight out of 10. That is your opportunity to improve by asking this follow-up question. So what do you think I could do to further increase from eight to 10? You see what I'm doing here? You're increasing yourself by that two point by following up with this question and giving the person an opportunity to just tell you what is that necessary work to make you a 10 out of a 10. For example, I give a presentation and people love the way I speak, but in Europe, people really enjoy details and tables. And sometimes they will say, Hey, actually I need, I think those information is better to be listed out. And if I don't ask that question, I would have never learned that. Your advisor might be very busy to give you the hands-on advice from day to day. So it's important to ask this question on who can I turn to help. And the same for your mentorship. There might be some aspect that your advisor might not be the most relevant person for you. Like I am a foreigner and my advisor is a local. So if I have a question about visa status and immigration rules. They have to share with me who are these person I can turn to. So don't hesitate to ask for a referral. Could you refer me to someone that you know is going to be knowledgeable? There is a shift in priority, but your advisor hasn't been too clear about what is expected from you. You are overwhelmed with work and there's too much to be done and you, you are feeling overwhelmed and exhausted. You can ask the question on what is the priority for you for this week or for this month? What are the deadlines that needs, needs to accomplish certain goal? Do you need to validate something in the lab to proceed to the next step? So having this in mind are important to push the project forward. Remember, you have to do the work to figure out what are these option one, two, three, and your advisor can feel more can feel free to pick the, the best option for you and you will proceed with much less resistance in your project. You have to schedule a meeting with your advisor, but somehow both of you have been busy and it hasn't been done for a while. What you could do is to write an email and specify um, the list of questions you have, like I suggested in the last video, and just ask explicitly how long you need and when is a good time. There is also a good practice that you can have regular expected meeting time in the week so that both of you will know, have a ritual to show up so that you get the feedback that you need. But in case that's not feasible in your situation, make sure to write an email to invite that in-depth conversation. 
especially if you might be in a difficult situation personally that you can give the person some heads up about I'm going through something in my personal life and I would love to have a little bit more time with you over a coffee and we can talk more about it. So the person know to free up the meeting time and you will get the attention that you will need it. It's important to remember what your advisor is not. Your advisor is not there to hold your hand and do all your work trivial in the lab for you. Your advisor is not going to help you make a decision. They are not going to help you decide. You are eventually the person that will make that decision for your project. And most importantly, your advisor is not there to respond to your email instantly. You are lucky if that person is like that, but don't have that expectation. You have to be prepared to be patient and push that person to reply your email in a polite way. The sooner you learn all of these skills, the faster you will have a workable and productive relationship with your advisor. So to conclude, it might seem intimidating when you are started with PhD and you have to communicate with your advisor. But if you have the right mindset and you are doing the job to make sure you save the person's time, you are respectful every time in a conversation and you are prepared and organized each time in a meeting and you do the task as you discuss and you communicate challenge effectively when the project is not going to the right speeds or the right directions, then you should resolve most of the conflicts that a PhD could have. However, if there is still a chance that you might be having an issue inside your program, you have to also be aware of what are the association or different department that could help you. Most of the university have graduate school that you could turn to and ask for help. You can be sure that um, you can find professional support in this aspect. Nobody should be feeling isolated. Well, thank you for watching my video. If you enjoy my sharing, please make sure to hit the subscribe button here and share with your co-workers or students about my videos. I hope this will be a platform that provides a lot of positive and constructive resources that will help you to finish your PhD in your best shape. Until the next time, see you. Bye.